Hello and welcome to the Stories of Northern Life podcast. We are getting close to finishing our Women's History Month series, and I hope you have been enjoying it so far. I am too excited to share with you this story on one incredible woman, so let's get into it. We've all had an impactful person in our lives that have changed us for the better. They have guided us through tough times alongside the highs in life. These people show selflessness and the purest love for humankind. Anna Isabel McRae was born on February 5th, 1879, the daughter of Walter McRae and his third wife, Miss Jane Sutherland Cameron. Her father was a second judge of the Algoma District, after John Prince, and her grandfather was Senator McRae, who was actually one of the founders of Confederation. Anna entered the teaching profession at Brixham Hall, a private school in Toronto. After teaching there briefly, she returned to Sault Ste. Marie in 1906 and, and was hired by the local board of education. She taught for a few years, but by 1912, the west end of the city became home to many immigrants, lots of whom arrived in the area to work at the steel plant. These residents of James Street area wanted an opportunity for their children to speak English. At this time, there was a school known as St. Ignatius, which was in the immediate neighborhood, where the Italian children had been in attendance. These parents of the children complained that the Italian children were not learning English fast enough. They expressed that too much time was spent on teaching Catholic religion, and the teachers there spoke French, instructing the students with French background better. These families felt that their children were not getting enough out of classes. If a public school were to open, there would be more time devoted to teaching English in a way Italian and Finnish native speakers in the area could equally learn. So they teamed up and requested a neighborhood school to be built for these families. Nearly a hundred Italians appeared at a city council meeting and demanded as a matter of right a public school should be built. After much discussion, the school board contracted A.C. McLeod and Sons to build a four-room school in 1913. September 1913, a new McFadden public school opened, named after Judge Ira McFadden, who was a chairman of the school board at the time. For the first year open, the school's principal was Mr. Glovenlock. He resigned the following year, and Anna McRae stepped in his place. This was just the start of her 28-year career as principal of McFadden Public School. Anna once said, The wild and woolly reputation the district had in its early days held no terror for her. She became one of them. Her first challenge faced when starting this role was the language barrier. Most of her students were from Italian or Finnish-speaking homes. So she introduced kindergarten to the school and began teaching English by using gestures and actions, such as wash my face and hands, putting on my shoes, hanging up my coat, setting a table, dishes, sewing, etc. This technique was a success. It was also helpful that these young students were eager to learn English and some of the older children would even step in and help teach the younger ones too. Anna also recognized the importance of ethnic traditions and wanted to make sure those values were met. She was known for visiting the homes of her students and meeting their parents. She valued building a relationship with them and wanted to stress the importance of keeping their children in schools. McFadden School became more than just a neighborhood school. It was more like a community center for the families in the area. She encouraged sports and physical activities for the children. She included it along with other classroom education. By the 1920s, there was over 375 students on the register. The four classrooms were filled and one class was even held in the hallway. 
The city council provided a one-room portable to help with the congestion in the building. There are nine qualified teachers and one kindergarten assistant at the time, with about 50 children in that kindergarten class. Another four rooms were added to the school, and a few years later an annex was added as well. There was so much growth on this side of town that they had no other option but to expand. Again, in 1924, they requested another addition of two to three more rooms that they could fill. Much of the success of the school was credited to the efforts of Miss McRae. She was in love with her work and very popular amongst the Italians. Anna took on such a greater role than an educator. She supported the children in so many ways outside of the classroom to make sure that they had everything they needed. She made sure every child had glasses if they needed them. She arranged for students to go to YMCA summer camps. She gave food to families in need during the Great Depression. She made sure students like Aurora Bukovich, the Sioux's later pizza queen, had the surgeries they needed. During the influenza in 1918, she nursed the sick in their homes. She also made sure that kids had what they needed to start their passions or get them out playing sports. She would buy skates and baseball gloves out of her pocket. A baseball glove was given to a student of hers, Hank Caputo, and this was the kickstart of his career in baseball. He founded a collegiate baseball team, the Mohawks, in Cincinnati, New York, and scouted for the Baltimore Orioles, Chicago White Sox, and the Montreal Expos. And he is also a Gold Pass recipient of the National Association of Professional Baseball, the minor leagues. And he praised her for this. All former students recognized the value she brought into their lives. Even long after the time at McFadden School, some of the students remember her as Mother McRae. More than 3,000 students attended McFadden School during the 57 years. In 1942, Anna left her role as principal of McFadden School and spent the rest of her career on staff at Central School. Miss Anna McRae passed away on July 9, 1943, after a brief illness. There was an overwhelming amount of sympathy and donations from former students. Many of these former students even served as pallbearers at her funeral. Everyone remembered her as more than a principal. She was a friend of the community and a humanitarian. She was held at such high regard that in 1956, 13 years after her death, the Sault Ste. Marie Board of Education received many letters requesting that a new school that was being constructed on Mark Street, adjacent to the newly constructed Sir James Dunn, to be named the Anna McRae Public School. And so it was. In 1979, there was a McFadden Public School reunion. Anna Troisto and Janice Scarfone, members of the student committee, spent over a year organizing the reunion. They reported that 3,400 invitational brochures had been mailed out, and people from far and wide came back to celebrate the school and Miss McRae. The dinner and dance was held at the Sioux Armory on Saturday, October 6th. And at this event, a memorial bronze plaque was unveiled in the James Street Mall, recognizing her contribution to the neighborhood and community. Do you have a favorite teacher? Did one person pop up in your mind? We all have a favorite teacher, and I think they have become our favorites because they impacted us in a way that translated outside of the classroom. They touch something in you on a personal level. We all don't naturally have the selflessness and the drive to help others like the lovely Anna McRae. But we all can do our best to be a little bit more like Anna in little ways. Imagine the world if we just had a few more Annas walking around. Taking away from this story, you don't need to go out and pay for children's glasses or ice skates. But do take some time to see how you can be a more loving and a supportive community member. We can always strive to be kinder to others and show a little more love. 
one act of kindness can turn into so many and can go a long way to making someone's day, week, month, year, or even a lifetime. Anna touched lives in ways that propelled the next generation to build a better and inclusive Sault Ste. Marie. She personally helped people like Aurora Bukovic, spotlighted in our second episode of this series, which propelled her to do great things for our community. Come back again next week for our last episode of the Women's History Month series. And don't be afraid to let us know what you want me to talk about next. I'm Mari Marsu, the Design and Engagement Lead at the Sioux Museum. And I thank you so much for listening. Talk to you all later. Goodbye. <laughs>